It's pretty quiet now. Bell makes very little noise. It's the tallest fall. Usually makes very little noise. The waterfall box. So this is a Danner Manufacturing. I think it's the 1000 model waterfall box. Um, this is the McCourt brand. Um, they, they call this a connecting pool, which I modified. It normally has um, the same outlet as the Cascade. This piece is the McCourt Cascade. It has this kind of um, lip that is meant to go down into another pool. And uh, it makes the water come out more, so you get more um, agitation on the surface, so it oxygenates the pond better. But I wanted a waterfall on this layer, so I um, I did some cutting and a little bit of um, reworking of the shape with the heat gun, and now it makes a, a waterfall that's pretty similar to the actual waterfall box, which was not easy and took some, uh, probably took about 20 tries to get it right but um, now it's exactly right. This pool, I don't know the brand name of this kidney shaped pond. I bought it locally at um, Claremont Pet, something such and another in Claremont, New Hampshire. Um, and it was a, a $96 pond, which I need to throw out the price sharpie on it. It's a kidney shape. I think it's about uh, it's just under 24 inches deep because um, the law in most states is if you have a body of water that's 24 inches or deeper, you have to have a fence around it. So this just cuts around that. I think it's like 22 inches or something like that, so you don't have to fence it in. And it's got shelves for doing plants. Um, my pump, I have a single pump running both the waterfall and the fountain. Let me get here out of the sun. And... Um, the pump is a Tetra Pond 1200 model. It's a 1200 gallon per hour pump. Pretty powerful pump, obviously, if it's putting out that much water and doing the fountain at full blast at the same time. Um, I have it attached to a Tetra Pond box filter that is just barely small enough to fit in the bottom of this pond. It's really pushing it. I added a... Um, a T fitting onto the top of the pump outlet. Normally the pump just goes straight up to the waterfall with the hose you can see there. and goes up to the waterfall box and comes out. And I added a, a T fitting onto it and then I actually added a, a valve onto that. I don't know if we can get to it under the water, but the fountain's actually got a, a valve on it, a little lever valve so I can adjust the flow or uh, even just completely turn it off and make all the water come up to the uh, to the actual waterfall. Which honestly doesn't really make that much difference with the, um, the loudness of the waterfall. I, I put this, this, uh, this valve and this um, fountain in here. This is a I'm sorry, I don't remember the brand of this fountain, but it, they were really good. Their customer service was great. I'll mention it in the comments. Um, they were really helpful. They helped me figure out what kind of plumbing fittings, because all these things come, are made in different places, have different fittings, but they, they were very helpful. Um, and then this is these are just um, parts from Tractor Supply. These are actually parts that are designed for um, uh, chemical sprayers, but they they've, are threaded exactly the same as the Tetra pump. And, um, and this, this fountain, which is great. Let's turn that back on. Uh, and, uh, the, um, the hose is also Tetra Pond hose, and I will bury it. And obviously I got a big landscaping project now. 
which I have a lot of uh, stone and um, and sand and pea gravel. Um, some of the area, I might as well do the whole area. I pulled these um, concrete slabs from an old retaining wall and just clutched them together and did a couple of steps up because I'm on a steep hill and um, I'm going to plant some Irish moss between them. And they'll look pretty decent once they have moss covering most of them, I believe. Um, all that is going to mostly be just barely surrounding the pond and then I'm going to have a, a decorative white gravel area for for up here, just to have, what I plan to do is I'm gonna put some acidifier on all this. It doesn't grow much grass already, so it's already pretty acidic. It's got this fir tree. There's a, a oak tree right overhead, which drops acorns all the time. But um, I'm gonna put some more soil acidifier down and I'm going to make all of this. I'm gonna try to go all the way down the bank. That's my compost bin. And make it all a moss lawn because you don't have to mow moss. It's beautiful. It's just might be a, a struggle in the sun on the hill but up here this is um what is it it's 1 40 in the afternoon and you can see it's just now starting to get sun it's got shade all morning so i'm going to do this mostly in moss i have some wonderful moss at john's house and some in the front yard i'll take some plugs it'll be a combination of stone and moss for all of this and um and then i built this this retaining wall for around this uh, fir tree and I'm going to raise it a little bit more and bring the stone all the way around and I'm going to mulch this and all up in here that's a pussy willow bush that I trimmed back did some rejuvenation pruning on and I bring this around and make this into a, a flower bed and I'm going to cut back my my hill here it's hard to tell but it's got a steep slope still and I cut it back so that I can make some level sitting area here. My chair's over here. I made that little retaining wall. That's going to be some catnip for the cat. And uh, and I might be able to set a table up here. It's kind of tight. It's probably 8 by 12. Yeah, probably about 8 by 12. And then down at this, this level is probably only... Well, including all the way to the stairs, it's maybe 7 by 14. It gets a little wider where the stairs are, but then I've got this retaining wall. So all told, it's not a big space, but um, it'll be nice. I'll sit here for a minute be quiet so you can hear how it sounds when I'm sitting in my chair. The neighbor's mowing the lawn. Yeah, so once this is all landscaped, it's going to be really nice. And uh, I'll put links to all of the products that I used, except for the pond. I'll put a link to the shop where I bought that in person um, in the comments. Anyway, making progress on it. It, uh, it got put off for basically all summer because I had to finish college and... Uh, Finishing college took everything I had, so now it's back to a blissful fall of relaxation and then a winter off um, doing nothing. I'm going to have some revision surgery on my chest um, to fix a couple of problems, probably in January. And then by the spring, I'll have to start thinking about if I'm going to go to um, go on to a bachelor degree program because I probably should or if I'm just going to look for work and uh, try to get off disability but having finished two associate degrees and having mastered most of my mental health problems um, it's looking pretty good for me right now but obviously I'm uh, I'm getting out there I've been going for runs um, I got a, a new fitness tracker, which I mentioned in another post, and um, now that I'm not constantly overwhelmed by school, 
I can start taking care of myself and start getting back into some hobbies, which will be nice. Um, the consideration is because finishing college took everything I had. Um, I'm a little concerned if doing a job is actually going to be something that I'll be able to do long term. Um, most of the jobs in the tech industry are full time only, so there's not a lot, well, there's basically no part time work in the industry, so I have to. Um, It's going to be really hard to find a part-time job, which is what I probably really should do. Um, but if I do that, then I'll lose all my benefits. So a part-time job won't be enough to pay for my apartment here and all the things that I need, much less uh, a decent lifestyle. So if I can only do part-time work, I might as well not work at all, which is kind of the catch-20 for people with disabilities trying to go back to work after being on, um, on disability you there's a threshold where you want to go back to work but if you're truly disabled which I, I truly am really disabled um, by my mental health um, you know what your limitations are um, usually most people that are disabled pretty much have a good idea of their limitations at least if they've lived with it for as long as I have and um, so I really am not sure if I'm going to be able to work full time doing any job because um, when I am doing anything full time, I'm doing nothing else. Um, I just realized how bad it was when I was in school this past two weeks. School's been done for two weeks. I only have one exam to take to get my, um, my uh, degrees. Um, I realized things that got off put off or just forgotten or I just didn't have the mental capacity to do it all and it was simple things like self-care like brushing my teeth now that I'm not having to get up and do college every day I remember to eat breakfast and then brush my teeth afterwards and then I remember to eat lunch and brush my teeth afterwards and then I remember you know, at about 10.30 at night, I should start getting ready for bed. And I take my shower, and I, well, I eat my dinner, I take my shower, and then I brush my teeth again, and I go to bed. It's just the little things, the health, the uh, little health things that you don't think about when, um, when you can't think about it because you're overwhelmed. And that's a lot of what uh, mental illness is, is just being overwhelmed all the time. So, now obviously it's a little triggering just to talk about being overwhelmed, but that's the truth of the matter. I'm overwhelmed pretty much all the time unless I have an awful lot of leisure time and I don't think about things too much. And, um, and that's generally why I can't work. But if I want to work, which I do want to work, I want to have more money than $939 a month, which is what I get on Social Security Disability and what I live off of. That's my entire income for a month, and um, it's not enough to do things. I mean, all these parts to this pond took me four months. Four months and a credit card, honestly. Um, but I've been paying down the credit card very um, religiously. But um, some of the stuff, you know, it was two months of income to get all the things that I needed to do part of this project. It took at least four months of just buying the supplies and all that gravel and rock in itself was a lot of money. And, um, and I still need a lot of this landscaping rock, this bigger rock, but um, I'm going to pick it up off the side of the road. I got a friend who will take me out let me pick up some more of this kind of rock. I live in Vermont. I live on a cliff, you know, so there's plenty of rock kicking around. You just have to go pick it up. Yeah, not on private property because that's not good, but the uh, side of the road that the state of Vermont owns is uh, it's rock no one else is using, so that's where I generally go. And, uh, 
And that's really all I need to finish this project is some more landscaping rock. And then it'll be done. It'll be nice. I'll have all fall out here to relax. And then we'll see what comes in the winter. And then next spring, I'll, uh, I'll begin some serious landscaping. I'll be able to get a little bit established this fall. But, uh, as you can see, it's pretty barren. So, there's not much you can do in the fall for landscaping. I mean, temporary stuff, some annuals, which I might actually do, put some mums or pansies out here, just something to have something, and uh, start getting my moss plugs down, because they'll, they'll be fine in the fall, and uh, I need to do something to screen all that. Yeah, I put like some sort of lattice or something up in front of this concrete retaining wall, so I don't see all the junk down there. That's not my junk, that's the landlord's junk. I have junk everywhere. That down yeah, there, the doors is my junk. I gotta put a storm door up, which I got for myself, just haven't done yet. And, uh, it'll happen. I'll get there.